What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go over five things that I think the Avengers beta, starting this Friday, cannot do. So I've made this kind of video uh, in the past. Really, really enjoy making these. And again, this is going to be, I mean, I guess a little bit more geared towards the negative side, right? we got to talk about the things that this game has to avoid, or at least the beta has to avoid. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about the things that I think this beta needs to do. And then obviously, when the beta uh, happens, we're going to have loads of stuff. So really quickly, let me just plug a few things just to get people ready. So I am going to be playing this beta. If you guys want to play it with me, you can friend me at Podcast Now. Podcast Now is my username. If you guys aren't already friends with me there, I accept any friend request to uh, that user. Okay, so if you guys want to play, I'm going to be probably live streaming the game this upcoming Saturday. Going to be having a, a couple different kinds of videos, maybe even collaborating with people like Evan or Slickmoff. So if you guys are interested in all that kind of stuff, it is coming up over the next couple days. Okay, don't have necessarily, you know, hammer down plans, but definitely working on on a couple different things, all right? Also, our Discord server, if you guys want to join that, good way of getting in contact with people. We can maybe set up some community events for this Avengers beta. All that stuff will be in the description below, okay? So, let's jump right into this. Five things. I guess they're in no particular order. I wrote them down just based off of, you know, when they came into my head. So, let's just go down my list. The first thing that this game can't have, or the beta cannot have, which I guess by extension, right, means the, the base game itself, is repetitive gameplay. So, gameplay, in my opinion, and pretty much makes the game, it can have beautiful visuals, and I'm a sucker, like I've said it before, right? If a game has water, I'm a sucker for it. If the game just visually looks really good, if the art style is a little bit different, then it kind of, you know, like I'm into realistic things, but I'm also into games like Journey or Kenna Bridge of Spirits or Everwild. So I, I'm into about a lot of different things. Having your game just look a certain way can definitely get me into it, but at the same time, if the game sucks, if it's repetitive, if, and by the game, I mean, like the game, like how you're actually, whatever you do in this game, right? So any game, I really do feel like gameplay is pretty much what holds your attention. If the gameplay is bad, or in this case, repetitive, then that's a big issue. So this game, look, you know, we've seen various degrees of, of quality with the gameplay. Sometimes it looks better than others. You know, the the I think the June uh, War Table event when they showed the Once an Avenger mission with Thor, I didn't like that. I've talked about that. I thought the gameplay was easily the weakest thing about that. The game continues to visually look better, and I get it. There's going to be different skills. There's so much customization. There's so many different ways of being able to fight. That's all fine. Hopefully they, they put that all together, right, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the gameplay, it's itself cannot be super, super repetitive. Otherwise, it's going to get old really quickly. And a game like this is literally designed for you to play it for months, for years, additional characters. But if you're doing the exact same thing, which doesn't even necessarily have to mean gameplay, it could mean objectives, if the war zone, which we'll get to in a second. But if these things are lacking, then the game overall is going to really, really suffer. And again, with that being said, war zone. The war zone uh, cannot fail is what I wrote, which I get is not necessarily a specific thing. But look, war zone are going to be really important. Drop zones too, right? So they've talked about war zones are pretty much raids. I would I would kind of equate it to raids where it's, it can take 15 minutes, but it can also take up to like two hours. They're very long things. You jump in, you participate in a lot of different objectives, a lot of different, different uh, I guess, like solving challenges, a lot of different fights with, you know, with either AI or people online. You do that, you get in, and you get out, but you don't get out very quickly, right? That's why drop zones exist, right? Where drop zones are, it's one objective. It'll take you 10 15 minutes, you can get in and get out. Which, by the way, again, I've said I like that. I don't like that. It's pretty much the exact same thing as a war zone. Like, it's taking just a part of the war zone and using it. But at the same time, I get getting in and getting out quickly. Okay, I get that. At the same time, same thing with, you know, again, kind of an extension of the gameplay. If these war zones suck, look, again, you're gonna finish at some point. You'll finish all the missions. There's only gonna be so many campaign missions, and they're probably not gonna be all that long. They'll have cutscenes, all this different kind of stuff. You could even watch them online. The real, I, I believe, one of the main core experiences of this game are the war zones. Playing as, because that's when you're going to be able to test out different characters. That's when you're going to be able to really, I would assume, like get a lot of experience points, right? To, to uh, you know, get different skills, get different armors, all that kind of stuff. That's where war zone's going to shine because you may be I may have an Iron Man playing a certain way. You may have an Iron Man playing a different way. We may be playing as different characters. And again, if you play maybe as a different character in the same war zone, you can experience it completely different. These are all things they've said and they've 
kind of like promised like you'll be able to do. But at the same time, the experience, you know what I mean? So they've said, I think, what, there's going to be like four war, war zones in this beta. Let's see how they work, right? It cannot, again, it cannot be a failure. I cannot feel, I don't want it to feel like I'm playing the same thing over and over. It's getting too repetitive. The characters aren't different enough. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that, they really uh, need to not do uh, for this beta. And again, I, I keep walking myself actually into the next one. Maybe I do it on purpose. Maybe it's more like subliminal. Uh, the, the third thing is characters not feeling unique. All right, this is, this again, is kind of a connection to the first two things, but this is maybe where people will be able to zero in on it the most. At the end of the day, you cannot have these heroes acting the same. Now, do I think they will? Not necessarily. When I see, you know, in the videos that they've shown before, right, when they show the skill trees and they talk about how many different skills there's going to be and all the different ways of being able to play your character. And again, your character won't be the same as the same character, but a different version for me, right? They're not going to be the same. Again, I want to believe them. And that, and by the way, though, that needs to be true, right? I don't want to play. Again, whether, and th but I, I guess I should say this. This isn't just war zones. This is campaign missions. This is drop zones. This is those kind of like boss raid kind of things that they had talked about, right? I don't want to play one of these as Black Widow and then play it again as Iron Man and feel like I'm kind of playing the same character. I real They need to make each character very, very unique. Do I think they can do it? Yes. Is this maybe the safest one out of all of the ones on my list? I do think so. I really do. I think the only thing that maybe is a little bit the same is how you traverse. Remember they showed that in this last war table where like Black Widow can use like the grappling line. That and her, well, You know what? When she was swinging and then Kamala could do the exact same thing with her hand? Now, I guess probably imagine just a skin of Spider-Man doing that with a web. I, I, you know what I mean? And maybe Hulk, he'll do like the whole leaping thing. I'm sure they'll have other characters do that. You know what I mean? I think they're going, or like if Scarlet Witch gets added, maybe she would fly the same kind of way as Iron Man. It's those things, though. So again, maybe when you're fighting, you're going to really feel different. But traversal, when you're just moving around as your character, I want them each to feel very, very unique. And if I feel like I'm playing as just skins, you know, a skin, but it's the same basic core character, that's a big problem for, again, a game that wants to last a long time, wants you to play as all these different characters, and has claimed that you're going to get a different experience out of all of them, they need to hold true to that. The fourth thing, and maybe this is just a kind of me thing, you know, I've talked about what I feel about skins and costumes and stuff like that, is I don't want them to focus too much on customizable stuff. So they already have kind of failed this, right, because they always do make it a point, probably, I think it's normally like at the end of every war table, right, where there's so many different things you can equip to your characters, look at all, the, look at the Destiny-like kind of thing, right, where we get to add all these different boosters or whatever to Iron Man. Look, at the end of the day, and so again, like, here me out because I know that, that that statement or me saying that could get a lot of hate. It's just not for me. I've never been one to be like, oh, I want to try out the 30 costumes. I've said it before. The only game that's actually gotten me into that is Spider-Man. Spider-Man on the PS4. All the unique costumes and how they kind of each came with something that made them unique. That was the first time. I, I mean, I, I love you guys probably know me maybe from like the Arkham games from Batman. I never really, I, I think I wore the, the original, like the costume that Batman came with in those games. That was what I wore the entire time. I didn't try out different outfits. I'm just not that kind of guy. But again, with the different things with, again, how it does kind of look like Destiny, in my opinion. I don't think that's necessarily bad. Destiny obviously has a system that has worked very, I mean, you know, Destiny is not a failure of a game, you know what I mean? So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's when they go into those menus and they hover over the things and all the different, I don't know, loadouts or the different things you can add to the characters through the different colors, which is like the power level and all that stuff. I'm just not into that. It's just, it's just not my thing. Even the costumes, maybe because I've just played, you know, I played, I replayed and I, I, I platinumed, uh, uh, Spider-Man back in like January or February. Maybe because of that, I'll be more willing to try out the different costumes, but I just don't care all that much. It, it could just be a me thing. I, I completely get that a lot of people really love the, the, the visual looks, cosmetic stuff like that. So I do get it, but for a personal point of view for me, I just don't want the game to throw, you know, shove it down your throat where it's like, hey, this is like 50% of the experience is looking at things. The other 50% is earning them. You know what I mean? That's just basically, I think in a nutshell, what I don't want to see. And the fifth thing, and this is, I guess, applied to the beta, but also applies to the main game. And this is, by the way, maybe something that is 
out of their control, so I get it. I guess I'll I'll reference that as we talk into it, is I don't want this beta to have connection issues. So, look, this is a thing, again, this is kind of uh, something that you can't get away from. You know, I've t I talked about kind of the same way I'm doing right now. I've done this before when Predator Hunting Grounds, if you guys have known uh, what that game is, when that game was coming out, I talked about the, they call it a trial. It was like a trial weekend. I talked about that trial leading into it. I reviewed it. I talked about the things that did well, the things that didn't do well, talked about, you know, the improvements they can make on it leading into the game. So I've done that. I'm kind of using it, honestly, as a little bit of help for this video or for this series, I should say, of trying to, like, figure out what to make. And one of the problems is the, the you know the internet the connection of that trial for Predator wasn't very good and again it was a thing where I I mean I knew that maybe Ilphonic wasn't going to be able to handle it now this is a bigger studio with the same you know with it being said this beta is going to have high amounts of pressure I don't and by that I mean like there's going to be a lot of people on the servers at once there is no doubt about it I don't know how popular it may be week one but let me tell you next fr so this Friday you can only play it if you've pre-ordered on PS. For, okay, so will it be a lot of people? Yes. Could it be in the millions? I think it's possible. I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed, but I think it could get that way. Next weekend, though, is pre-ordering it for Xbox, PC, and then open beta for PlayStation 4. So that's going to be a big one. And then the Friday after is open beta for anybody. I mean, anybody that wants to try out this game is allowed to in two Friday on, on August 21st to August 23rd. That's a big deal, and you know, and I, I'm actually I've said it before. I praise them. I've given them you know congratulations for uh, allowing that to happen, right? Because I think that's a really big thing. But at the same time, again, it can go very wrong because again, it may not be under their control, right? But at the same time, you got to prepare. You got to get those servers ready because I've said it before and I'll say it again. People are going to decide on this game whether they're going to buy it or not buy it. They will decide off of this beta. Not everybody, not and probably not even the majority, but there will be a ve I think a very high amount of people, maybe a couple hundred thousand. Which, when you think of a hundred thousand people spending sixty dollars on a game, that's a big deal. I really do th think this is a make or break uh, beta event for this game for a lot of different people. I think people will cancel pre-orders because of this. I think people will try the beta for the you know the open beta and see, okay, should I get it or should I not? And if it fails, they'll say, I'm not pre-ordering, I'm not buying it. It's going to make a judgment call on a lot of different people. So, you know, again, the other four things I mentioned are pretty much things they can control. Their gameplay, their things that they've created and they've thought of and they've thought of these systems. For the multiplayer, for these issues, and I get it, I mean, it could only really affect war zones, drop zones, stuff like that. But at the same time, if, I, if I'm going into this, okay, and I'm expecting, okay, like I've said, maybe I'll play it with Evan, maybe I'll play it with Slickmoff, whatever, and I'm going in and then the multiplayer just completely fails and it sucks, then it's like, all right, well... It doesn't give me a lot of confidence for the main game. You know what I mean? Now, I, you know, I, I'm I, going to not necessarily hold it over them unless, obviously, when the game comes out, if it's like a couple days, a couple of weeks of just nonstop problems, that is their fault. But as of right now... I don't necessarily think they'll be able to handle it. I think that's kind of the case with any of these kind of events. So I'm not going to hold it over them. But at the same time, it is something that I think they need to be aware of, right? So guys, let me know in the comments below. What are some things that you think this beta cannot do? What are some things that you think the beta needs to do? Again, tomorrow, I'm going to make a video on that. Like I said, make sure you guys are subscribed, have the bell icon turned on, have friended me, all of this social media kind of stuff, just so you guys are up to date on what's going on. Again, friending me on PlayStation. So if you guys want to play the beta with, me. I'll try to be playing it all three weekends, okay? So there shouldn't be a, a problem with that. Again, I'm hopefully planning on doing different things with different people. So lots of really fun stuff coming to you guys in the next couple weeks. Avengers related, and I hope to see you guys there.